Hi everyone and welcome to Subchat. Today is very exciting because we have two lovely guests. Georgia, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Georgia. I'm the LGBT plus open officer this year. Lucas, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Lucas. I'm the LGBTQ plus trans officer this year. Oh, exciting. So, nice to have you guys on the podcast. So obviously last week we've gone from one special campaign to another campaign. I know. It's at the moment. So I suppose we can get, we'll get into the campaign in a moment, but to kick us off, we normally like to kind of ease our guests in with a quick question on what you have been watching on Netflix or TV, something you'd recommend. Um, George, do you want to kick us off with anything you've been watching recently? Sure. Um, last night I rewatched the film Handsome Devil. It's on Netflix. Um, so it's about this, um, a couple of kids in uh, a boys boarding school in Ireland. And it's like a really cute coming of age gay um, story. It's got Andrew Scott in it as um, a closeted English teacher. And um, these couple of boys that are like, one of them's like the captain of the rugby team and the other one's like, this outcast and maybe they fall in love oh i love i love stuff like that spider-man is andrew scott i'm trying to think is that spider-man or not no <laughs> not at all <laughs> you're thinking of andrew Maguire. <laughs> andrew scott is the guy that played moriarty famously oh, oh yeah. yeah fantastic actor and other things he's in his dark materials and stuff like that but that's probably what he's most most known for yeah, I knew his name from somewhere. Just got the films mixed up. I like that. I, I literally have so many films on my list, but I don't know about you all, but like I always feel like it's harder to watch a film because you have to sit there for a long period of time. I don't know. Lucas, what, what have you been watching? I am so bad at watching films, but like I'm <laughs> so good at watching TV shows. Yeah. Um, I finally watched Queen's Gambit. Oh. I'm obsessed. It was all right. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> you know, I was, talk, I was talking to the Chess Club and they said after um, Queen's Gambit, they had a load of people wanting to join their group because, um, and they said, but it wasn't the chess sales as well, that once they had this series come out, everyone said one start playing chess. Mm, include, I'm included. I've been playing chess online. I've got, I've got a new guilty habit of just like, yeah, I won't go into it. Still wait for our mini tournament. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's do it. Um, Fantastic. Hannah, do you want to give us a quick thing what you've been watching? Um, what have I been watching? Honestly, I don't think I've been watching much. I've been reading a lot, um, which is very unlike me. Like, I've suddenly got this burst of reading, um, but also guiltily still watching Married at First Sight Australia, and I should probably start watching something that's a bit more um, substantial than just rubbish, but I'm really enjoying it. So, yeah, I'll say it again. What about you, Luke? Uh, yeah, just to wrap us up, I haven't been watching anything recently. I suppose I, I've been watching on the weekend, Come Dine With Me. It's one of my favourites. Like, I've been watching Come Dine With Me on Netflix. I'm too afraid to miss it. Should we do a, should we do a sad Come Dine With Me? <laughs> oh, why don't I supposed to do a Come Dine With Me this month? And... I would give people food, boys. <laughs> okay, but... Um, fantastic. Right, should we get into the campaign then? So, yeah. um, I guess George or Lucas, whoever wants us to kick us off, do you want to talk a little bit more about what's going on, what the campaign's about, um, and give us a quick introduction, if that's all right. Uh, sure. So February is LGBTQ plus history month. So we've been running events all month um, just because of that, basically. Uh, we've had guest speakers, we've got blogs going on, um, the web page is all nice and new and shiny, it's got loads of things on it. Um, we've got a a digital exhibition of um, queer icons throughout history, well, recent history, um, that should be going live today or tomorrow. Um, and at the end of the month, we will be doing a virtual showcase. So people have been sending oh us submissions for, um, for a showcase and we will be doing a little watch along. Um, what showcase is it? Pardon? What kind of showcase is it? Just whatever. There's some singing and dancing. There's some, wow. you know, bits and bobs. Everything going on. I like. Yeah, it. <laughs> and um, we're also partnering with Express Radio to do a radio takeover on uh, next Wednesday. I think I think that's awesome. I've literally seen so much going on. You can see the hard work. Like I've seen the like, what is it? The graphic drawings of everyone involved, and I'm like, that is insane. Like with the blog posts you're putting out, there's so many blog posts, right? Like you've got two this week coming out. Yep. Like, what, what, 
Was that you guys that did that then? How was that through Marcoms? How did that? Who's... No, Lucas uh, did that, drew them. Really? He yeah, did yeah. It. Oh my gosh, that is. We've got an artiste. Yeah, I've I've seen. That's amazing. That's great. I like capturing like everyone involved because I think sometimes with campaigns with what you're doing so many people are involved that like you want to make sure that people see almost like the face behind the work should we talk a little bit more about the association uh, um I know obviously we've talked a little bit more about uh, we talked earlier about you guys with the um showcase express how engaged has the association been with with the campaign you know have you all been kind of coming together for this is it um what have you been up to together yeah absolutely oh sorry <laughs> you go because I did so, the last one our association has been absolutely incredible it is we we basically like commission them to do a lot of the stuff so like the blogs were written by our association committee and the express radio shows are another chance where we're just kind of giving our association like that platform and then they can really take it in whatever direction they want so yeah with the blogs and the radio shows they've been given kind of very like barely any brief at all so that they mm. can individually really come up with topics that they're passionate about and that's how we got such diversity across all of our five blogs uh, you honestly have all engaged like so much and I think it's amazing to see like clearly there's like such a tight community that you've created how, how can students get involved with like the association or all the things you're doing um, well, you can you can join the association on the NSU <laughs> website. Yeah. Um, but a lot of our stuff goes down on Facebook. So if you give us a follow on Facebook, you'll get lots of updates, lots of posts about what we're doing this month, uh, lots of invites to the talks we're doing and all that sort of stuff. Um, and CU Pride as well. Um, they're the the LGBT society um, under under Luke's purview, and um, so there's there's them you can get involved with them on facebook as well and then tang's the uh the trans society is also on facebook and other places probably oh brilliant that's i did see that um because zach is a member of the exec of society's exec and i know zach has been very active with um part of this campaign as well and his blog post um lucas you mentioned some of the blog posts that have been going out um do you want to give a little bit more detail about that and maybe a, a teaser to what's to come and yeah. what, <laughs> yeah so we've had five blog posts we're kind of publicizing them individually but they are actually all up on our web page if you want to go read them all at once but um we started out with kind of a very personal um um blog post from zach about um his own coming out experience and then the second blog post that we um just put out a couple of days ago was like a very different route it was about um influential historical lgbtq plus figures um largely in the music industry who which was by connor who is very passionate about uh, representation in music um which actually little sneak preview i guess will be that is definitely a topic that will be discussed further on our Express Radio Takeover. The two blogs coming out this week um, are more personal stories from further minorities within the LGBTQ plus community. So we have um, personal stories from someone who is disabled and who is our um, disability rep. I don't remember what their uh, title is on the association, but we also, and then we also have um, an incredible blog coming out next weekend about um, what it's like being a person of colour in the LGBTQ plus community and particularly coming from a Muslim background. And then we have one more blog. We have uh, the, the blogs are genuinely incredible. They're really good. I was going to say you really have created as an association such powerful blog posts um and I think yeah credit to you all you know this year has been tough and I want to know like what challenge do you think this year has had because obviously first years have arrived and when normally students will be able to kind of like seek that community and meet people who 
they connect with how do you think you've kind of overcome that challenge or how do you think that challenge has impacted you all um I mean definitely it has impacted us because I know that a lot of community is found um through uh, especially CU Pride they run a lot of events during freshers um going to the local gay bars and things like that so with, without that it has been difficult and I imagine much more difficult for the freshers who who are looking for this community um, to, to be able to find it and get involved. Uh, there's been lots of socials online and things like that, but we know that um, students do slip through the cracks or maybe they're not interested in, in joining a society. Um, so we're trying to combat that this month as well with, um, in, in the last week, we're, we're running another campaign on top of History oh Month, gosh. like under, under the banner of History Month, we're having yes. Stand With LGBTQ+, which is our annual mental health campaign um and so we've got wristbands we've got pronoun badges coming and all sorts of things and we're going to be making them up into little well-being boxes to um to send out to first years living in halls um and they will be available to request through res life soon and um so yeah you'll get yourself a little a little wristband um pronoun badges that you can choose from a, a, a list of them in welsh and english um, some sweets, some information packs about like about CU Pride Tangs, the association, um, like student support, um, probably other things. That's insane. That's amazing because like, yeah, wow. I mean, honestly, you don't stop. You know, you think like, <laughs> it isn't enough. Let's do another. And having that sort of like pack for students. I mean, that is amazing. Yeah exciting times I know that Georgia you have a quiz for Luke and I um, I do <laughs> promised quiz I thought that uh in in the spirit of uh, yeah. of history month I thought I'd put you two to the to the test a little oh bit um don't worry it's very it relaxed <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was actually quite difficult to write because I was trying to gauge how much information the average straight person would have <laughs> well, like, is. is this reasonable for you to no, know this is good maybe though, like, we know this is good to Hannah and I get quite competitive as well so we'll see we'll see yeah but I also I'm like this is this will be interesting and I hope you know those watching as well will learn something not just only us so. yeah I've gone for like not really obscure stuff so if okay. you're queer and you're watching this you're probably going to be yelling at the screen because you're not. But these. that's going to make us look bad. <laughs> is it, mul is it multiple choice? choice? Okay, so no, it's not going to be multiple choice. What's going to happen is uh, <laughs> I'm going to pose the question to you okay. and then it will be whoever has their hands up first um, can answer. Lucas, you're not allowed to answer unless... What? Lucas can't answer. Luke. Lucas can't answer because he's going to know all the, all the answers. <laughs> it's unfair. It's an unfair advantage. Yeah. Well, we'll give it a go. Let's go. So, so unless you don't know it, in which case, okay. Lucas and I can answer. And I then, don't know it. okay, so well, what if you don't? If you don't know it, then I'll say the answer. I'm going to say what the answer is anyway, because, because it's going to sure have like know. a little bit of a like a little bit of a fun fact or like a teaching moment attached. To and that. what are we going to do? We do it like a hand up or what? No. Yeah, hands up. Have a noise. No, we'll stick to hands up because I don't. I mean, unless you want to make the noise yourself, like a foghorn or something. <laughs> quack, quack. Yeah, we have to have a noise. Luke, mine's quack. Okay, mine will be buzz. Just you saying the word buzz. Just me saying buzz. Okay, cool. There's uh, there's only ten questions. It's kind of okay. short. <gasps> Apologies if it's too hard or too easy. It was really difficult to gauge. We'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. Right. I'm really okay, here we go. Nice and easy. I think this is nice and easy. It might not be. <laughs> oh God! What are you saying? That? I don't know what sort of knowledge you have or what's okay, reasonable let, for you to know. Okay. okay. Question one: What were the Stonewall riots? Wasn't that all? Oh. Quack. Hannah heard of this, and I feel like I don't know it in detail. Was it? Can you repeat? Is it Stonewall? Stonewall. Wasn't that where they threw stones at people? No. But a commendable effort. Like, wasn't it? Um, wasn't a protest against? Um, it was a movement against some sort of law or policy. I can't remember what it was. Is that much closer? Okay. I've heard of this. I've okay, so wait, wait, I'm keen. Wait, no, you tell us. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I know, but you know, when like I feel like we should know these things. So this is good. These are good questions. 
Okay, so uh, the Stonewall Riots was uh, a spontaneous uprising outside the Stonewall Inn in New York in 1969. Basically, um, you couldn't serve alcohol in, in uh, America in the 60s to, um, to gay people, you, you couldn't serve them. So um, what would happen is all of the gay bars would be run by the local mafia. And so the police departments would use this as an excuse to raid them all the time. Um, and it was during one of these raids, which were uncomfortable and humiliating and generally bad. And all of the, um, all of the, the queer people got, got arrested, especially those who are gender non-conforming, because uh, it was also illegal. You had to wear at least one article of your assigned sex's clothing or something. So you couldn't be in drag or you couldn't, you couldn't be trans essentially, um, or they'd, they'd arrest you. Um, and it just, you know, they just got fed up one evening and started a riot. Um, and it went on for a couple of days. And then after that, the, um, it, it's, it's widely referred to as the catalyst for the modern gay civil rights movement. Um, and there's a lot of issues with that. And, you know, there was other riots that get less, um, you know, publicity and, and there was lots of other catalysts and factors, etc. cetera. But for, for, a, for a history class 101, the Stonewall riots was like the beginning of the gay civil rights movement as we know it today. Wow. Do you know what's crazy? It's like, did you say 60s? Yes. Like, it, that is just mad. They weren't serving alcohol and people were getting arrested for it. <laughs> okay, so 1969. So not that long ago. That isn't that long ago. And like, when you said it, I was thinking like a long time ago where I was imagining people like throwing stones at like, you know what I mean? And now when you say that, it's like, that is so present and there's going to be a lot of that I've that's... got lots of other questions and you're going to be surprised at how recent things were okay I think. also I think you explained that really well considering it is such like a a big broad potentially messy because there's a lot of like conspiracy theories but I think yeah it's become it... like a very much like an urban legend and no one's really quite sure what happened and there's conflicting accounts and you know how how much change did it actually affect really? And does it discredit the, the organizations that were already operating beforehand and all this sort of stuff. But just as like, as an oversimplification, because you guys don't need to know all that, um, it is, is widely referred to as a catalyst of the modern gay civil rights movement. This is really interesting though. I feel like this has like sparked such a thing in my mind of like we've, we've learned something if anything today already this is question one question one yeah it's really it's well like... the rest of the questions that Hannah does it we, first question we always <laughs> didn't get right no but this is exactly... has to be said yeah this has to be said this is you know like keep trying yeah next question I want to know more okay so as you didn't get that one you're unlikely to get this one uh so Lucas be ready to stay <laughs> okay who are widely touted as the instigators of these riots? I'm looking for two names. Mm. Are they big names? Are they like are they like celebrities worldwide, or are they kind of I the community? I think more like they'd be people who I wouldn't. Have... Any name that you think it might be, guess it. Yeah, go. Mm. Even if you're like way off. So it was 69. Mm -hmm. was yeah. It? Okay. I got to go with you, Hannah. I haven't got an absolute clue. I don't have a clue. Yeah, come uh, on. Marsha P. Johnson was rumoured to have thrown the first brick at Stonewall um, during the riots, but she denied this. Um, however, she did say that she climbed a lamppost and dropped a bag of bricks on a police car. So... Um, <laughs> Wow. Um, Georgia, the other name. Yeah. Is that Sylvia's partner? It is girl? Sylvia, yeah. Yeah. So these two are like sort of, sort of infamous for being the instigators of the riots, even though they probably weren't. Mm -hmm. um, it's just sort of <laughs> like they got caught up in the urgent urban legend and they were very active um, afterwards as well. And just generally during the seventies, they were very active specifically um, uh, for trans rights in, 
in that area. So Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera were both uh, trans women of color and um, which is why it's important for their names to be connected to the Stonewall riots, even if they probably didn't start them, just right. because um, there's a big danger of, you know, like whitewashing and, and you know, people thinking that, that white gay men did all the work and they didn't, and they wouldn't have done if, um, if, if these guys didn't get involved first, because there was a big movement in the 70s and 80s um, among the, the white gay community to like make being gay more acceptable and more palatable. And because of that, trans people and people of color really pushed to the fringes. Um, and there's a very famous speech. Um, I say very famous, obviously not that famous, but um, <laughs> there's a speech by Sylvia Rivera that she does at New York Pride in 1973, um, where she she was said that she was allowed to do a speech and then they didn't let her up. So she had to like go up like by force. And it's, it's, it's moving and it's awful. And it's, you know, there's, there's these white gay people booing her and telling her to get off the stage. And she's trying to explain that like, you know, where would this movement be without us? Because Stonewall Inn was not like this reputable place. It was run by the mafia. It was seedy. It was where all, all of like, the drag queens and the the trans people went to hang out like it wasn't this I don't know it wasn't palatable and it wasn't reputable and it's important to remember that um so so yeah Marsha P Johnson and Sylvia Rivera were the names that I was looking for gosh this is going to be a lot of information I feel like I should be taking notes these two feature in um in my booklet that I wrote over Christmas uh, for the digital exhibition exhibition of of um LGBTQ icons in recent history. So these two are in there. Where can students find that? Is that like something that you've done for the website or is that something you've done separately? Or? It's something that I've done for the website. Um, it should be going up in the next couple of days. We've been oh. getting the final proofs through this morning. So um, <clears throat> so they, yeah, that should, go, that should go up soon. It should have been about 15 people, but I got carried away and I think it's <laughs> 21. So yeah, that is so, great. <laughs> Hopefully, really need to read it. So, sorry, Lucas. Hopefully, by the time this podcast is out, you should be able to find it through the campaign page on the SE website. Yeah, that's good. Um. Okay. So, changing gear. Yeah, changing gear slightly. When was homosexuality partially decriminalized in England and Wales? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna say it's a lot later, than we think Hannah and I'm gonna say do you know what Wait, 90s. I, I reckon it's in the 90s what do you know what's sad it's like in my head I have a time I want to say but I'm like I, say I, say the time you want to say it's well, not wanna, as late as the 90s I want to oh. say like 1970 after that but I'm like that's... it's 80s is it 1970 is pretty close Lucas do you know the year do you no. Want me to... well, no okay know. 79, but I don't know. God, was I was 19, way off. 1967 was the partial decriminalization of homosexuality. Oh, I was thinking. Specifically for men, because um, lesbian stuff was never outlawed because they just forgot about women, essentially. <laughs> when, you say, when you say partially, what do you mean by partially? That comes on to the next question. Oh. Do you know what? I was thinking a full kind of. Um, why do you think? Why do you think it's it was only a partial decriminalization? Oh. Mm, this is why I was getting confused because I was thinking is it because of the women they were ignoring regarding the lesbian stuff, like they decriminalized certain aspects of it. So no, no, because um, lesbian sex and yeah. all that stuff it was never outlawed because they just never bothered to. Yeah, um, always legal. That's yeah, so yeah. sad that they would like you would get arrested for it, but like in the same way that you'd just get arrested for being gay anyway. Like like you'd definitely still get brutalized by the police, but technically it was never outlawed. Okay, so why partially? So why do I say it was only a partial decriminalization? Because um the age of consent um for for men was 21. 
So if you were a man and you were having straight sex, it was 16. But if you were a man and you were having gay sex, it was 21. That was the age of consent. So and it had to be in, it was something like in private residences. But yeah. that meant that if you rented a property and the landlord found out and he didn't like gay people, you could still be arrested. You are because kidding. it wasn't your private residence. So, so when was the full decriminalization then? Um, when do you think the age of consent was equalized to 16? When do you think that was? So the actual partial one was, what was it in the end? 1970, oh, 67. 67 was the partial decriminalization. I reckon it's probably gonna be about six years later, five years later. No, I have a feeling that it would be longer. In the than year 2000. What? You are. The age of consent for gay men was not equalised to 16 until the year 2000. That is. So does that finish off the full decriminalisation then? Yes. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, when I said six years, I was like, I wish. Yeah. I wish it was six years later. You would think. That is unbelievable. Like, none of it seems to make, oh, it's so, I don't know. I'm like lost for words. Like, that doesn't even make sense. What, what was the process like on that? Was I guess it went obviously through government, but was there a lot of what action for that? Yes. I mean, there were several failed, um, like, attempts to get it fully decriminalised in the 90s, um, but mostly because of, like, the, the fear mongering around the AIDS epidemic. It just wasn't put through. There, I think there was... A particular one in 94 but that I'm pulling that out of my out of my head I don't know if that's true um that failed um yeah mostly because of fear around the AIDS epidemic that really like increased homophobia in Britain so yeah if you were ages 16 to 21 and you were having gay sex you could be arrested for it until the year 2000 is crazy by me that's surprising with the time difference isn't it from you know yeah nine to two thousand that's a long way we are Golly. doing terribly no but the i i feel like even though we're doing terribly like we're learning so much there is educational benefit yeah there. so I'm, i may have overestimated how much it would be reasonable for you to know about this stuff <laughs> well do you know what i think there'd probably be you know um a lot of people watching this thinking god you yeah, have these two idiots but there are probably a lot of people watching who like me and hannah don't know a lot about this stuff yeah that's yeah, and, this, and this isn't the sort of stuff it's not your fault obviously because it's not the sort of stuff that gets taught in school you have to look out you have to look for this knowledge yourself and if you're not in this marginalized community there's not really like mm. any any reason for you to have done that so how, how i'm not being like oh my goodness you guys didn't know this <laughs> i'm glad i'm glad well i know Luke, uh, I'm confusing. sorry have either of you watched pride no you really should watch it um it is like entertaining but also yeah. you would have um probably been closer with some of your answers so far and it is a big part of like welsh history as well where can we watch it um i it has been on netflix i'm not sure if it's still on netflix okay. it's definitely been shown on bbc Okay. So if you've got Fox of Broadcasts, if you're a student, okay. you can, you'll be able to find that. Um, it's called Pride. It's a 2014 film. Okay. Um, searching in Box of Broadcasts is really finickety. So if you do search it in there, you'll have to like quote mark Pride and then probably also add 2014. Otherwise, you'll just get loads of transcripts of okay. news or whatever. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic film. It's, it's set in 1984 with the uh, with the miners' strike um, under Thatcher's government, and it's essentially this group of gays in in London um, like sort of empathise with the miners' strikes and raise money for them, and then they kind of strike up this beautiful sort of symbiotic relationship with the mining community in Delight in Wales, and um, also the, like the sort of creeping shadow of the AIDS epidemic is is sort of stepping in and you know it's about love and it's about family and it's about it's beautiful and it's heartwarming is it, a, it is it also a, incredible yeah like it's just an incredible piece of film everyone should watch it i've seen it so many times and every time it gets me it gets me right in yeah. the heart yeah 
Okay. When I first watched it, I had to pause in the middle to have like a big old cry about it. Okay, my well, mom, I need to watch this. Sorry, Luca. My mum actually showed it to me for the first time because she was like, oh, I want to watch this film. Like, it's about minors. And I thought maybe you'd want to watch it with me because it's about gays. And then <laughs> it like, I don't know, it like changed my life. And then I like moved to Wales and everyone should watch it. Okay. It, and it's not like you will learn a lot, but it's not like boring. It is like so entertaining and you know at times it's like light-hearted and funny but also like it might tear your heart out and stomp on it like it's incredible okay, it's got I such th- a good cast as well so mm. Andrew Scott is in it so we mentioned him earlier it's got Dominic West in it it's got Bill Nighy in it it's got other people yeah oh, okay I like it year, there was um like a film night essentially in in the lounge with with pride um but obviously we couldn't do that this year and you can't show films over Zoom because of copyright. If you're looking for any more recommendations, that's one of the things that we really um, revamped on the web on the campaign webpage is um, I went around all my friends and I was like, what do people need to watch slash listen to slash read? And there's a whole big list of recommendations for you. Okay, I like that. Oh, okay. Well, that's my night sorted. <laughs> Back to back to the quiz. <laughs> <clears throat> so okay. this one you might know the answer to. What is or what was, sorry, section 28? Section 28. Was it repealed recently? I think, was it to do with marriage? No. Section 28. It sounds familiar, but then I think if you could have said section something, it would have, you know, they always talk about <laughs> this, and then I'm like, oh, I think I know. It, it's related to your job, Hannah. Tangentially. Education. Is it to do with, like, within the curriculum? Or something to do with close education. <clears throat> or... Okay, so section twenty-eight yeah. was a section of the Local Government Act of nineteen eighty-eight that banned schools from quoting from quote promoting homosexuality as a pretend family life end quote. So it was a big Thatcher thing that she did. Um, and so it bans schools and educational institutions everywhere from talking about homosexuality at all. So that meant that there was a huge increase in disinformation about the AIDS epidemic, uh, lots of like huge like fear culture about um, talking to kids about anything like this. You know, um, LGBT teachers were closeted for fear of losing their jobs um, because because if they if they even um, you know, helped a kid who was coming out, um, they, were, they, they could have been fired. Um, or even, even if they were like, my boyfriend got me a coffee the other day, then they could have been fired for promoting homosexuality. That is mad. What, what year was this, did you say? I know you- 1988. That's crazy. Follow-up question, when was it repealed? I want to say 1990. No, I, I think... 1980. It's going to be the next government, isn't it? So it's going to probably be early 2000, 2002. Wait, so... nine. So close. It was 2003 it was repealed. That's recent. Yeah, so all of us will have grown up in the shadow of Section 28 because lots of teachers teach forever, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's so true it's like habits right like yeah like they implemented that and we're still experiencing the impacts of that now mm-hmm. yeah and even now um teaching kids about lgbt sex ed or just even that we exist it's not mandatory in the curriculum it's optional so you will still have kids living like it's section 28 still and, and growing up ha- having never heard of the term gay unless it's being used as a dirty word against them you know what now you said it like I think about my school experience and how little 
even like other students and teachers would talk about it and that is sad like that is like coming to university there's like this whole another like story and community and you hear about it you see it you see the amazing things you're all doing and at, at school like actually thinking about it now it wasn't until I was in sixth form to like in where I think my friends would talk about it or like would feel comfortable conf- conf- <laughs> saying comfortable and confident in the same sentence feel confident enough to talk about it like that is actually mad like I can see that and it's and it is why essentially you don't know the answers to any of these questions because you would never have been taught about it and also this is the sort of history like we want to know about and about things that are from so long ago that even though they are relevant in history they don't impact or you don't see the impact whereas things like LGBTQ plus history it's like that actually impacts your life now and your knowledge of the people around you so why why don't they teach us things that we actually need to know about it same with like black history as well where where are the things that are actually important to our society like it's crazy go on (laughs) okay question I think this is question six okay no it's question seven I can count (laughs) I don't do maths (laughs) This is, hopefully we can get one right. That was, I think that'll be a success. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> don't, don't put any pressure on us. Okay. I mean, you were close with the 2002. That's the closest you've been. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So what was the first country to legalise gender reassignment? Was it? Oh, my gosh. I was going to say a country then, but I think it could have been the opposite. Canada. First country. What? Can we, know, can we know the year first? Can we know the year? No, because the year's the next question. Oh. <laughs> okay. I feel like the year would help a lot. Can we do the year question first and then go into the country? Okay. When was it? When was it? Okay. Um, oh, okay. 19... 2000. 2006. 19 what, did you say? 2006. Earlier than that. 1990s then. Earlier than that. <gasps> okay. 1970. This is changing my. But 70s. Like this, okay. this isn't necessarily like British. So yeah, this isn't uh, this isn't in Britain. This oh, is... okay. So it's not Britain. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, okay. Because oh, yeah, the first possibly... question was which yes, country did it? Right. Okay, that makes sense. I can see so why. Is... Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. Um. I'm going to go for 19. I had a bear in mind that you probably think of the country as well. So what country is it going to be? 75. Close. It was 1972. 1972. To legalize, the first country to legalize gender reassignment. Not to make it easy or accessible or anything like that, just to legalize <laughs> it. Just to say it. Like... And by legalize, I do mean decriminalize being trapped, essentially. But where, where do you think it was? But well, we know it's not Britain. I think Definitely it's not. going to be somewhere like I'm really trying to think now. But... I think it may be Canada. I think it could be somewhere like not Canada. Wait, hold on a second. The one I'm thinking of, I can't think of. Sweden. Yes. Oh. Do you know what? That was going to be my first guess. When it was my... Sweden. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so happy with that because my friend's family are from there and I was like, what is it called? It had, like, there had been, like, surgical procedures before right. that, um, quite a lot before that in history, but they had to be, like, covered up and hidden for, like, other reasons. Specifically in Germany in um, the 1920s, there was a whole institute called the Institute of Sexology um, that was dedicated to to doing this, to... To studying trans stuff and to to doing um, gender affirming affirming operations, um, and then the Nazis burned it. So it's mad. <laughs> Dark twist, wasn't it? it was like, yeah, I was like, I thought there was going to be hope, and then literally... no, no, the Nazis burned it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And that's why it took so long after that to be like, how do we do this? Because all of his research and all of the books that he'd written and all that sort of stuff were all were all burned. So, in case anyone yeah. was wondering, the Nazis were transphobes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
-hmm. yeah i mean 1920s berlin especially was like a really liberal place it was really like you could be gay and no one, no one would care essentially like it wasn't good for you to be gay but it, no one cared it was a very relaxed sort of liberal place 1920s berlin um and it is just such a shame because you know all of that got destroyed yeah, that's, that's so sad what was a molly house i'm gonna be honest i've never heard that term that gives us some hope yeah <laughs> she thinking great i've got oh i've got so is it some sort of club yes okay wait is that is that the answer club yeah it's basically a gay bar in the 18th and 19th century that's what they were called they were called molly houses okay. they weren't always bars they were sometimes they were just like village halls or wait like people's minute. houses is that, is that something i wrote about and then forgot about georgia fairly certain yeah Cool. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I'm fairly certain that. That's really. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, a Molly House is is what any sort of meeting place for for gay people in the 18th and 19th centuries. That was what it was called. Wow. I have a very good memory. And uh, that links to kind of what was essentially like an underground gay language in London in that time called Polari, which was like a mixture of like tradesmen's shorthand and like Yiddish and just generally Cockney rhyming slang. It was like a specific gay blend of all of these things oh um, so, that, so that gay people could talk about being gay without being arrested essentially or being beaten up. Seriously? Uh, yeah, it's called Polari. And do you know any Polari? Um, I don't because it's all very long and complicated. Um, it's like a whole sentence for like one thing. It's it's all very it's very euphemistic. Like you think Cockney rhyming slang doesn't make any sense. Like like Polari is worse. Um, there are lots of books and studies about it, and it is interesting to like read up on 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 that language. And it basically just fell out of disuse when people didn't need to use it anymore. There you go, a little fun fact. Yeah, that's, it's crazy to think that, like, you know, you can't say the things you want to, so you have to think of another language to communicate. Okay, last question, question number 10. Here it goes. What was lavender dating? I've heard of that. Let's think about this logically now, Hannah. Let's get this one. Lavender date, lavender. Smell. Lavender. <laughs> Smells <laughs> nice. Attracts, attracts bees. Um, are, you, are you interested in lavender? Me? You sound... well, we used to have lavender outside my house. It used to smell really hot. Well, Where do you think fun. you were going with bees? Just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, how do I think you, I think you're going to pull this out of the bag? Did your friend know this and happened to well, tell? I'm you? trying to think of a reason that isn't bees, me, so. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Lavender dating. Does it, have, does it have anything to do with lavender? Not at all. Okay. Apart from that lavender is a very gay colour. Okay. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll skip the bees and smell idea then. <laughs> lavender is like a very like coded gay thing, like a green carnation. Right. Because Oscar Wilde used to always wear green carnations. So it became like a, like a thing. <laughs> okay. Lavender is, is similar, similar. Okay, so lavender dating was the concept where a gay man and a lesbian woman would get married so that they could go off and have their gay little relationships without anyone being suspicious. That's crazy, though, that it even has to come to that. But the fact, what century was that, it, like, coined, that term? I don't know when it was coined, but it was very popular in, in the 19th and 20th century. Ah, so, like, okay. recent. That is yeah. recent. Oh my gosh. That's... So people would literally get married so that they could actually yeah. live the lives that they wanted to without being like looked upon. Yeah. So if you like very conveniently had two gay couples, two men and two women, the, the, they would marry off with each other and then just right. look like live next door. 
Um, basically, I want to see a sitcom about that. I want to see. Yeah, I want to see a sitcom about about the uh, the families that live live next door and they're gay and some hijinks. That's what that's I want. Actually, this sort of thing. We I'm gonna have to write it. Do it, literally. <laughs> I'd watch it. Well, Hannah, I don't. Well, I, I think terribly the end of statement. What, what we've done that quick. But I, do you know what? It was educational. There's probably a lot of people, you know, saying a screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, this one, and we've failed the test but i think we come out with, with more learning in there um, yeah. i'm i'm glad that it was hard that we couldn't answer it because if we could have answered it we wouldn't have come away with like these thoughts like thinking like wow like i don't know enough like you know i don't know you pitched it well georgia well, i remember Thank georgia you. easy quiz <laughs> <We've>, <laughs> terribly <laughs> No, just I, mean, I knew the answers to all those questions. Yeah. No, I, I think to be fair, that... it was hard to gauge. And I'm not really like a pop culture gay, so I wouldn't have been asking you questions about RuPaul and stuff like that. Like, I don't know any of that. That goes straight over my head. What I'm interested in is this sort of history, like, yeah. you know, so that's so for me, these questions are very easy to ask. So. so should we round up then in terms of what's to come? Um, we've got blog posts. Um, how can students find you? How, yeah, what can they look forward to next? Um, we've got a talk on Wednesday, but that'll probably be done by the time this comes out. So I hope it went good? well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you would like to watch it, it, will, it should be embedded into the web page and on our Facebook. Um, it's a talk with um, a similar association in Poland. Um, we're, we're talking to them about what it's like um, trying to do this sort of work in Poland now where things are very, very polarized um, and bad if you're gay in Poland. Um, so we're going to be talking to them about that. And yeah, it should be it should be really interesting. Well, I will. I, I can't thank you both enough for coming along today. That's all right. Thank you for having us. This yeah, has been you. the most informative like podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. I feel like you both should have been our history teachers at school. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you did a better job than they did at teaching me. So, yeah. Okay, well, thank you both for coming on and we, um, good luck with the rest of the campaign. Look forward to seeing yeah. you. Yeah. And um, thank you for having thank us. You, yeah, thank you for watching everyone at home as well. Yeah, thank you so much. And, um, you know, you're more than welcome to come along again. Uh, I can't wait to see all the packs going out to students as well, which is super exciting to hear about. But yeah, see you soon. Thanks everyone for watching Sab Chat and bye.